um, of course, thoughts on the nurses going on strike? Well, of course, uh, nobody wants the nurses to go on strike and uh, we would urge the nurses uh, not to go on strike. We are recovering from the pandemic and we really, really need our nurses right now. Everybody really needs our healthcare system. You know, we know we've got millions of people waiting for catch up operations and scans and, and treatments. So uh, we very much hope that uh, you know, discussions will continue, but we very much hope that they don't go on strike. But of course, it's not just the nurses. We've seen many, many uh, other uh, people balloting for strike as well, including teachers and postal workers and many others are uh, balloting for strike action. And, you know, we understand why, because, of course, inflation is infecting everybody. It's impacting every business, every organisation, every household. That's what we're seeing. Everybody's seeing it. Everybody's uncertain about their futures, what's going to happen to mortgage rates, etc. So we do understand. We do understand why it's uh, difficult. But there, there's a key message, I think, Kay, which is you cannot spend your way out of inflation. You really can't. And the number one thing we have to do is tackle inflation. Otherwise, whatever we do, it will all be eaten up by inflation. So that's the number one thing that we have to do and have to achieve. Did you clap for nurses during the pandemic? Of course, everyone did, yes. Mm. So are you com uh, comfortable that they're now using food banks in order to be able to survive? Well, I mean, I go to my food banks quite a lot and, and ask, you know, why is it? What, what is it? What's the reason why people are there at food banks? And quite often when you, when you go to the food banks, it will be people, something will have happened. You know, something will have broken down either a relationship or a boiler or anything, they're usually there in an emergency situation. Um, I know there was a lot of focus on increasing the starting salary for nurses. There was a lot of uh, focus on making sure that lower paid people in the nursing profession um, were, were, were also uh, increased. But, you know, there's no doubt that people are worried, very worried about inflation. Do you think nurses get paid enough? Well, I think the average when I last looked was 34,000 before these increases so it's you know it's more than the you know the average salary of, of, of uh, across the country but you know in some ways you can you can never say nurses get paid enough they're so valuable I mean I've just my nephew's just had an 11 hour surgery uh, last you know night before last you know there is no way anybody who's in that situation can underestimate just how important nurses and doctors are I mean they are literally a lifeline to many people so we should be paying them more well, we pay them. Obviously, there's the independent review bodies. There's 1.3 million people work in the NHS. So, you know, and it's obviously public sector. So you've got to get the balance between, you know, how much you pay. It's a huge bill. It's a huge uh, cost, uh, the NHS. Um, and you've got to get the balance right because, of course, it's taxpayers who have to pay that bill. But if so. we don't pay them anymore, they're, either, they're going to go on strike. Many others are, are leaving. Apparently, if you want to work for Amazon and Aldi. Well, you know, they're very different jobs working for Aldi and Amazon and, um, and working as a nurse. You know, they are very different jobs, very different hours, very different rewards in terms of personal rewards as well. I mean, this is often, I mean, I've been the skills and apprenticeship minister. You know, we've got 1.3 million vacancies and often people say social care was a, was a big part of it because social care workers are paid less than nurses, uh, considerably less than nurses. And this was always the question about how to make sure they had more rewarding career options, but also... Um, you know, could 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 also um, you know increase their their salary or go off to Lidl or whatever. Um, and the reality is, you know, people who work in social care work in social care because they know people rely on them. They love looking after the people they they they're a lifeline to. But you know, getting that and that's a private sector. But getting that balance right is always what we seek to do. Making sure we've got new nurses coming in. Sure. I went and opened a new. Uh, School of Nursing and Allied Health in Chichester three Fridays ago. It's really important that we offer um, apprenticeships. I've talked about apprenticeships a lot yeah. at all various levels. And that's also for people who want to retrain uh, later on to but go into If they into go on nursing. strike, there's no more money. So there's no point in them going on strike. Well, I don't think there's any point in going on strike anyway. I think it's, um, you know, when we're in a position where we've got millions and millions of people waiting for operations or um, for help, waiting for, for, for medical help, help and the only people who can give that medical help are largely our nurses and our doctors so I think it, you know it's, it's irresponsible then I wouldn't say that because I understand the, the I understand the difficult um I think I understand the difficulty right it, it, it is really worrying for people not just in our country across the world we are all facing the headwinds 
Obviously, we know why the, the two years, you can't close down the global economy for two years and not expect anything to happen. That's what's happened. And we now have to recover from that. And then on top of that, of course, we've got the war in Ukraine, which is playing havoc with energy supply and energy pricing. Sure. We know why. We know we're all in it. Uh, and, and, you know, I would I would urge the nurses to, um, you know, to continue those discussions. But the reality is, it's, it, if we gave massive above inflation rises, not only would we have to raise a lot more money, but it would actually fuel inflation. This is the problem. We really have to tattle inflation. We have to make sure that that is, there, is, is, is really brought under control. Other, anything we do, they won't notice. When you were working in the health ministry, you were responsible for mental health yes. awareness, weren't you? Um, what do you make of somebody like uh, Gavin Williamson using someone's mental health against them? Well, I mean, it's inappropriate to use anybody's mental health against them. I mean, obviously, he's denied the allegations and he said he uh, doesn't want to be a distraction and he's uh, going to uh, um, repute them from the backbenches via the, via the independent process. But I mean, mental health is very serious. A lot of people who are um, suffering from, from mental health and uh, are concerned about their mental health, a lot, a lot of young people as well, obviously now in... Uh, responsible for education. There's a lot of young people who are concerned about their mental health. And, you know, people, when they're suffering from mental health, need support. They need the right support from the right professionals uh, or from people around them sometimes as well, if it's lower level. Yeah, and they don't need the chief whip using it against them, the then chief whip. His deputy said that he was using people's mental health against them. Yeah, well, these are allegations which he's obviously denying and he's obviously gone back uh, to the what back sort of bloke is he? Well, I, you know, I've worked with him several times and I haven't seen any of that. He's never th threatened me or he's only, only ever been supportive, actually, personally, to me. Um, but I wouldn't say I know him very well. I mean, I, I was reading today about this curry club. I've never been invited to that. You know, I've never been out on a night out or anything like that. Mm. Um, but in terms of working and professional, um, he's, he's, he's well, all, we've seen been... the way that in, in messages that he's been speaking to the previous chief whip, a woman. I mean, it's yeah. totally... Yeah, I, unacceptable. And I think he apologised for that. That was unacceptable. I mean, you know, I I've ba barely have meetings with the chief whip, which is probably a good thing. But, um, you know, I know that there are some quite robust conversations. I've seen all the plays about uh, chief whips and that kind of thing. Mm. But uh, it is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And as it, I think it was right that he apologised. Mm. Is it right that he resigned? Yes, I think it is. You know, he said it was a distraction and it is a distraction because we've got really s sort of s serious things that we need to navigate. Navigating this uh, economic times is going to be quite tricky. And obviously, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, is, is working on that at the moment. But that's and you'll hear about that a week uh, tomorrow. But we've also got the war in Ukraine. The last time I was on this programme with UK, um, Putin was threatening escalation of the war in Ukraine. You know, we still don't, you know, we're still keeping very close to that. To, to know how uh, that's going to develop. So that, let me these are really serious things. Of course they are, of course they are, but it doesn't excuse his behaviour. What no, it does do is bring into question Rishi Sunak's judgment. Well, I think the whole country saw uh, Rishi Sunak's judgment on display all over the summer when he very clearly... Why did he give him a job when he was being investigated for bullying? Well, he very, he very clearly over the summer, Rishi, told everybody what they didn't want to hear, but what was the right thing, which was basically what we needed to do to navigate these difficult times. And he was given those hard messages. People didn't want to hear them, but that I think showed his judgment. That's why I backed him. I thought you're absolutely right on this. And even though it's hard messages, there's no avoiding these hard messages. Was it right to give Gavin Williamson a job when he was being investigated? Well, of course, he wanted to bring in all the different talents. He wanted to bring in mix of experience, new faces. Um, I think at that point, um, I, don't, I think there'd been some conversation which, you know, there'd been a disagreement between uh, two chief whips or the former chief whip, two former chief whips, I guess, at that point. Um, so, you know, there was a conversation about a disagreement. That was all. You know, it wasn't an investigation. There wasn't an official Should investigation. Should he have sacked him? Well, I think he resigned very quickly. You know, this all started from what I understand. It started over the weekend, yeah. you know, and, and he, he resigned on Tuesday. Should he him before he resigned? Well, I think he, Gavin did the right thing by resigning. Yeah. You know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's had the same impact. You know, he's, not, he's, he's now going to be on the back benches and he's going to be f fighting the allegations, as he says, um, which he disputes. Well, he doesn't dispute what he said to the former... No, he's apologised for yeah. those words. Yeah, yes. he's, you're the fifth education secretary in four months. Doesn't the department deserve better? 
Well, I think I'm pretty good, if I'm honest. I'm but... not <laughs> reflecting on you particularly, but I'm reflecting on the fact that you've had um, uh, five education secretaries in four months. Yeah, we be better continuity. We have definitely gone through a difficult time as as a Conservative Party. There is no doubt about that. We had the great resignations; lots of people resigned, and then obviously that led to uh, to Boris, and then we had a leadership contest that led to Liz, and now, of course, we know what happened there with the. Uh, the fiscal event or the mini budget as it's called and the market's reaction and now we've got what what I campaigned for over the summer actually which was for Rishi Sunak to be the Prime Minister and of course that comes with some changes um, but one of the things about uh, education I walked back in because I have been an educator in fact it was my first ministerial role uh, apprenticeships and skills I walked back in pretty much I would say three quarters of the people I knew already they were the same people who were there we brought back Nick Gibb who has been very consistently driving up school standards since 2010 Rob Halfen who's very experienced in the department and then one of the brightest new um, uh, MPs from the 2019 intake Claire Cotino so it's got a, it's a really good mix of experience and and, and and people who uh, I think will be able to really hit the ground running. And then we've got Diana Barron in the Lords. Her, teacher telling, all the time. her teachers are telling us that um, they need more money uh, because otherwise they're going to have to sack uh, members of staff. Yeah, so there's a website gone out with a model behind it, which has made some assumptions, obviously, as models always do. Um, again, there's no doubt that we're going through difficult times. I could tell, I could look at any household, any organisation, any business, two things are happening. Energy prices have gone up, of course, that's why we've got the energy relief bill uh, scheme in so place. So there will be more money for, t for schools? Well, we have put four billion extra. For will there be schools, more? Schools are one of the, well, obviously there is a fiscal, uh, you know, there's an autumn budget, which is a week tomorrow. So you're going to have to wait. There's going to be cuts, aren't there, to the education budget? Uh, no, you got, the, 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 set, the, the £4 billion pounds was actually probably, it was the second biggest increase. But we're going to see 15% cuts across the board, aren't we? Um, I think it depends on what happens with inflation, how they calculate, what contracts they've got. I mean, the IFS has looked at it and said, look, we think that school budgets can manage this year, but the uncertainty goes out when it goes out further than that. And if any school is in distress or any school really is in trouble, there is a scheme whereby you can come to the department. We work with schools to make sure that they have get all the efficiencies okay. they can, but also get the support they can. But can I just say, Kate, it's the first time on as Education Secretary, sure. I have no doubt that this is really, really a difficult time for head teachers and for teachers. And our teachers have done the most amazing job during the pandemic. I remember going round to schools, they were grappling with the technology, having to do things online, having to do things on, at home, looking after their own kids as well. They were absolutely fantastic. They know they're a lifeline to our kids. They know every single day they're catching up every single day they're providing that inspiration to kids we want them to continue to do that we really need them we all need them parents need them kids need them we all need them to we're continue almost to do that. out of time two very quick questions are you going to watch the crown yes i have watched the previous ones yeah mm -hmm. um it's uh, king charles will not like it trust me i've seen the first uh, three episodes and are you going to vote for matt hancock i don't watch that program and therefore i probably won't no okay do you think you did the right thing I can't imagine why you would want to do it. I really cannot imagine. I can't think of anything worse um, than eating bugs or having bugs crawl over you. <laughs> in public, in public. I can't think of anything worse. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I guess he's brave. Yeah, or stupid, one of them. Or maybe <laughs> a bit of both. Um, how is your nephew? Is he all right? He is. He's still in the Royal London. Thank you so much to the Royal London because uh, 11 hours is a long time to be in surgery. But thank you for asking. Um, but yeah, he's, it's a serious operation, but hopefully he's OK now. Fantastic. It's great to see you, Education Secretary. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks thank a you. lot.